you must know this. So this presentation is an intriguing talk about viruses. A virus is dead. It's not alive. Yet it can destroy your body. So let me just show you something. This is a cell. If we open up the cell, it has a bunch of things in it. Okay, you can see it has all these different, they're called organelles. They're just little tiny parts of this huge factory that makes stuff, okay? You have the mitochondria in here, which is the energy factory. You have the ribosome, which is basically a protein factory. And then you have the nucleus right in the center here. Well, guess what? Viruses don't have any of this stuff right here. In fact, viruses are not even cells. A virus is just some blueprints with the sac around it that has no energy, no machine. It cannot do anything outside your cell. Today, we're going to get into some potential theories on where viruses really came from. It's really interesting. And viruses on one hand can kill you, but on the other hand, they can actually really help you. And I'm going to get into that as well. But to understand viruses, you have to just get a little bit of a foundation of what they are and what they're not. Viruses are not cells. They're very tiny things that compared to the cell. So they come in contact with a cell and it's like a lock and a key. Something is, gets in, inserted like a spike protein and it just activates something that then causes a chain reaction in your body, which involves the hijacking of your machinery. So they basically can tap into your energy, use your resources, not theirs for their survival. And then they start to reproduce and make more of themselves. And then they explode your cell. Okay. They're not nice. They're classified as parasitic. Now, before I get into some of the theories on where viruses came from, which is a huge mystery, I want to just cover some ways that these viruses evade your immune system. There's one type of virus, they rupture the cell membrane, they disintegrate it. They're called lytic viruses. And then the other type of viruses are called latent viruses. So they also destroy your cell, but soon after the initial infection, they invade your DNA and they go silent. And then one day you get a little bit older and you go through stress and bam, they come out of remission and they become reactivated. Like herpes simplex, like that little blister you get on your lip is one example. HIV is another example. Epstein-Barr virus is another one. So the problem with the latent viruses is they pretty much last a very long time in your body and they never go away. And as long as you don't experience a lot of stress or poor health, you might be okay. But the lytic viruses do their destruction and the immune system eventually takes care of them and wipes them out. It's just wild that these viruses even exist in the first place. Where did they come from and why are they here? The first one is called the virus first hypothesis. In this theory, the virus has been thought to come before even our cells existed. Another theory is called reduction theory. In this theory, the virus is some type of remnants or residual something from some living cell. So it's lost its ability to survive independently. And so it must need another cell to tap into its energy. Then you get this other theory. It's called the giant virus and the fourth domain. This really has challenged the traditional theory of viruses because a giant virus is a lot more complex. And the theory goes that viruses are a fourth domain so you have different types of cells. You have bacteria cells, you have other cells. It's not really a cell, it's just an entity. Then you get this a next theory that has to do with contribution to evolution or having something evolve. And this theory goes like this. You have this thing called horizontal gene transfer. It's kind of like sharing knowledge, key knowledge to help someone survive. You can pass down knowledge from you to your children. In fact, 8% of our genes have viral components. Then the last theory has to do with viruses being a necessary tool to help with survival. Now, those are all the theories that are known. There's a couple other ones, but I just want to add my two cents at this point, what I think the purpose of viruses are for your immune system. So in the immune system, you have two types. You have the type of immune system that you were born with. It's called the innate. Your mother gave it to you. But you also have another part of an immune system called the acquired immune system. This is the part that you need to develop over time. And you cannot develop it without viruses. And they cause your immune system to adapt and become very, very strong if you 
let this process happen. So this is why I've done videos on this where like with a child, when they get sick and they have a fever, the response is just to stop the fever and through a series of infections, that immune system gets trained. If we never let our immune system get trained, it can never develop and become strong. Viruses have given us the evolutionary pressure to develop this robust immune system. And this could relate to just exercise, right? If you've never exercised before, how strong are you really gonna be? Can you actually really build up this fitness reserve? No, not without exercise. And so this side will develop strategies to help them survive and then our bodies will also develop other strategies. And so they're sitting there waiting and waiting for the door to open, for you to get weak. Now, other viruses like the Epstein-Barr virus, for example, there's many of these that do this, but the Epstein-Barr virus downgrades your vitamin D receptor because somehow it knows that vitamin D is really essential for your entire immune system. So I just have to explain something about vitamin D that's super important. A lot of people don't know about this. In fact, most doctors do not know that there's two different systems for vitamin D. And there's three different types of vitamin D. You have the vitamin D that comes from the sun, and then you also have the vitamin D that gets stored in the blood. And then you have the last vitamin D which gets activated inside the receptors wherever it goes, okay? So there's two systems of vitamin D. One is all about calcium and bone, and the other system is about everything else, okay? It's non-calcium functions. Immune system is the big one. The most important thing that you need to know is the vitamin D in the blood is in an inactive form, and this is mainly to feed the bone. A very tiny bit of it, like 0.04% of it, feeds the immune system. So if you want a strong immune system, but you're not getting daily amounts of either sun or the supplement or vitamin D in from the food, your immune system is going to suffer because the half-life is 24 hours. For the bone, you can get by with like 600 to 800 IUs, but for the immune system, you need a minimum amount of 10,000 IUs. 10,000 IUs would be basically 20 minutes in the sun, but the average person needs 10,000 IUs every single day to support a healthy immune system. Then you also have many viruses, including the rhinoviruses, which gives you the common cold. They need zinc and your immune system needs zinc too, because zinc also turns down virus reproduction. And then you have another virus called HIV. What that does is it targets this very specific immune cell that is like the quarterback of the entire immune system. And it takes that one out. One way to counter that, just as a side note, is selenium. Selenium is in Brazil nuts. It's also in shellfish. And if you have enough selenium, you can reactivate that cell and get it to work right. So now I want to just touch briefly on what reactivates certain viruses that are latent or in remission. As you age, you become weaker. And also the more stress you have, the more cortisol you have, the weaker you're going to become. So cortisol suppresses your immune system. In practice, I notice a lot of people that had viral infections had them right after a severe stress. And then other viruses can be reactivated through ultraviolet radiation, the sunlight. But the secret to this entire presentation is what can we do about viruses. You have two specific types of immune cells that kill off viruses. One is called the cytotoxic T cell. The other one is called the natural killer cell. Both of these can be greatly strengthened, okay? And I'm gonna go through a list of all the things that you can do. Vitamin D is hands down the most important nutrient for your immune system. It's a natural immune modulator. It means that if your immune system is working too much or too slow or not enough, it'll bring it to normal. Number two is zinc. I already talked about that. Zinc increases the immune system many different ways. One way it counteracts this whole viral shutdown of your zinc supply. Another way is that zinc just stops the reproduction of viruses. Then of course you have vitamin C, right? The best vitamin C food you can eat is raw sauerkraut. One cup of that a few times a week would give you 700 milligrams of vitamin C. Sleep is another important thing. Try like heck to get eight hours of sleep. You know, I was at one time bragging because I didn't need much sleep. 
you know, I can get by, I can get up really early. That was a very stupid thing to brag about because I'm telling you, seven, eight hours of sleep is a necessity. Number five, the reduction of stress, whether it's physical work, going for a walk in nature, doing stretches is very, very important. Also, if you have a fever, don't try to get rid of it right away. Why? Because fever cooks the virus. And so when you take some type of thing like an aspirin or whatever to try to get rid of the fever, now you prolong the infection. You don't allow the body to run through its training cycle of fighting off the infection. But if your fever gets you know, above 104 Fahrenheit, which is 40 degrees Celsius. At that point, maybe you do something, but not at lower temperatures. Number six, garlic, very important. Number seven, elderberry, awesome for viruses. Intermittent fasting, very powerful. Also, magnesium helps increase the killer T cells. I recently stumbled on information. So one way to strengthen the immune system is to take about 800 milligrams in the evening before you go to bed. Believe it or not, laughter can also increase these killer T cells. Viruses outside your cells are powerless. They can't do anything. They just float around. They have no energy, no mechanics. So this is why it's important to understand that you need to go through infections to build up your immune system, and you need the key nutrition to support and strengthen the immune system itself. Versus the other viewpoint, which is not true, where you have a virus that is alive, which is not true, and it's controlling your body, it's stronger than your body, it goes into your body, and at all costs, you just need to suppress and try to kill it off. There's all sorts of medications, which ends up weakening your immune system. So remember this concept and apply it to your lifestyle.